The searing heat is partly blamed on the El Nino climate phenomenon that brings hotter and drier weather. Things are about to shift, though, with meteorologists saying La Nina is expected to take over for the second half of the year. So what should you expect and how do these climate patterns change the weather? The Pacific Ocean, it is Earth's largest body of water. That is why this region can be an engine for weather around the globe. El Nino and La Nina are forces of nature unlike any other. They are natural climate patterns in the Pacific Ocean, which come around every two to seven years. And they are capable of unleashing devastating weather events across the globe. Different parts of the world experience their effects in different ways. El Nino tends to raise global temperatures, as we saw in 2023, while La Nina events tend to be slightly cooler. Uh, to understand how it works, let's first look at normal conditions in the Pacific Ocean. Like a conveyor belt, trade winds blow warm water across the Pacific from east to west. So warm water pools in the west of the Pacific Ocean. But along the coast of the Americas, cold water from deep down in the ocean replaces the warm surface water that is transported away. So in normal conditions, there's a big temperature difference from east to west in the Pacific Ocean. I'll think of El Nino as a disruption of normal. Here's what changes. Trade winds become much weaker. So warm water drifts back to the east. This means more warming on this side. As a result, warm water piles up centrally in the Pacific Ocean. And when that water evaporates, it creates wetter and warmer air. These conditions send shock waves into weather patterns around the world that alter rainfall, heat waves and drought. Tropical regions like Southeast Asia, Australia and Central Africa typically experience drier conditions. El Nino years tend to set new heat records and scientists say it helped fuel early season heat waves in Asia this year. La Nina is essentially the opposite. When La Nina happens, trade winds get stronger. It pushes warm water further west. And then on this side, cold water rises from the depths of the ocean to replace the water that travels away. So the western part of the ocean is warmer than usual. And the eastern part is colder than usual. And like El Nino, La Nina also impacts global weather, tending to create weather patterns that are wetter and that can unleash intense storms. Regions such as Australia and Southeast Asia are likely to see increased rainfall, raising the risk of flooding. La Nina generally reduces hurricane activity in the Central and Eastern Pacific. But this sets the stage for more hurricanes in the Atlantic Ocean. So El Nino and La Nina can virtually affect us anywhere in the world. If not through the weather, it will at least have socioeconomic impacts. For more, let's speak now with Professor Benjamin Horton, director of the Earth Observatory at Singapore, uh, of Singapore rather, at Nanyang Technological University. Professor Horton, thanks for coming on the program today. Uh, okay, so El Nino, it's coming to an end after a year of record temperatures around the world. Uh, can you tell us which months we could see things cool down? Uh, and generally, why should we care about the La Nina climate pattern now? Well, the first thing that I would like to say is that the record-breaking temperatures that we've seen over the past 12 months, yes, El Nino contributed to them, but the ultimate driving factor is human-induced climate change. So that's the reason why in 2023 we had the warmest year since records began. That's why in 2023 we had the warmest month since records began. And that's why in 2023, we had the warmest day that records began. The El Nino Southern Oscillation and El Nino and La Nina are the end members cause a deviation around the normal. But it is, and I want to repeat this, that it is human induced climate change that causes the weather patterns that we see today. 
Now, regarding ENSO, the El Nino Southern Oscillation, we've been in El Nino for the past 12 to 18 months. Sometime in the next two to three months, the weather pattern will shift to La Nina. La Nina may cause a respite in the record-breaking temperatures, particularly here in Southeast Asia, but other parts of the world will receive record-breaking heat. Big concern for La Nina is La Nina is associated with much higher rainfall globally and especially in Southeast Asia. And then when you combine that together with human induced climate change, we'll get extremes again. We can expect record breaking rainfall in Southeast Asia and therefore probably catastrophic flooding and landslides. Well, Professor, talk to us about how, you know, the El Nino and La Nina conditions uh, have changed over the years. Any anomalies you've noticed? Any, uh, do you find that they have intensified? I mean, also, as you mentioned, climate change has played a big part in this. Well, climate change makes the aspects of El Nino and La Nina more extreme. That's why you see these record-breaking temperatures in India and in Pakistan. And a few weeks ago, we had the record-breaking temperatures in the Philippines. And the response is quite devastating. People lose their lives. People have their livelihood affected. When we come to La Nina, we're going to get record-breaking rainfall. And unless policymakers and government start to listen to climate scientists, we're going to have catastrophic flooding and landslides. Regarding typhoons or tropical cyclones, which you mentioned in your clip, we can expect devastating tropical cyclones to be hitting the Atlantic and the Gulf Coast of the United States. Why do I say that? Well, we know that for a devastating hurricane, you need two conditions. You need a very warm ocean to provide the energy for the biggest hurricanes to form. And La Nina and human-induced climate change has caused these conditions. Second of all, we need stable winds at the upper atmosphere. When you're in an El Nino, the winds are quite strong and they can break down the structure of our biggest hurricanes. But when you're in a La Nina, the winds are light. So in this coming summer season, we have the perfect conditions to produce the most devastating landfalling hurricanes. And that's why the US in the National Ocean and Atmospheric Administration have put out warnings along the Atlantic and the Gulf and Gulf seaboards. Professor, can we focus on this region for a moment? Uh, we're speaking to each other from Singapore. Uh, which countries here in Asia are the most vulnerable to these climate patterns uh, and what makes them more prone to feeling these effects? Well, Southeast Asia is quite a complicated region and each city or country has a different climate threat. Here in Singapore, we know that the threats of climate change are sea level rise. They are extreme heat. And if you remember the last time Singapore had a La Nina, which was in 2019 and 2020, we had record breaking flooding. Again, if you combine that with human induced climate change, you'll just get heavier and heavier rainfall. So what we can expect in Southeast Asia is very, very heavy, rapid precipitation. Now, in certain countries, such as Singapore, there's a lot of civil engineering that makes the country resilient to heavy rainfall. But in other regions of Southeast Asia, there isn't such infrastructure. People live in more hazardous regions, and therefore it is more likely when we get heavy rainfall that we'll get a humanitarian disaster. We see that that, as an example, what's happening in Papua New Guinea right now, they had very, very heavy rainfall. They had reduced vegetation cover. We'd had deforestation, which binds the soil together. But the heavy rainfall caused the soils to be wet. And then we had a catastrophic landslide where many people lost their lives. Uh, Professor, uh 
Uh, is it all, you know, doom and gloom? I mean, La Nina also, you know, could could it be good for the agricultural industry, for example? Because um, monsoon season means more rain and more rain means uh, better for the agriculture, right? Rain, uh, rice, wheat, palm oil, palm oil production. Uh, is it also good for the fishing industry? And how far could this all go in bringing down food prices? Well, if we didn't have human-induced climate change, I would agree with everything that you said, because it's part of a natural variability that the Earth has. So in areas where during an El Nino it's warm and dry, then the Earth responds and produces a La Nina where it gets wet and cool. But we have human-induced climate change. So when it rains, it's going to be of a higher magnitude. So it won't be just a gradual rainfall. It will be torrential rainfall. And if we're not resilient, then it causes floods and landslides. So it's not how it used to be. Climate change has changed everything. And you know that in Channel News Asia, because commonly week after week, you are recording these devastating climate events. So when you have human-induced climate change, it makes matters so much worse. We can't go back and look at a La Nina that occurred last century and say these are the impacts. We have to consider human-induced climate change. But the positives, the positives are, again, the scientific community. The scientific community have been able to warn that a La Nina is going to come. The scientific community can tell you where there are going to be droughts and wildfires with a La Nina, where there are going to be torrential rainfall and possible flooding. So the scientific community have done its job. What we now need to do is clearly communicate how human-induced climate change and La Nina will influence communities. But most importantly now, it goes on to policymakers. Policymakers and governments must keep the citizens safe and secure, make sure their lives and livelihoods are protected. Then we have a more resilient future. But we must accept that the climate conditions or the weather conditions that we were used to growing up have gone now. We now have to deal with frequencies of emergencies and we must be much better prepared than we are in India or the Philippines or Pakistan to extreme heat or how we've seen Brazil, how we've seen Dubai with heavy rainfall. Right, Professor, we do appreciate your time and your insights this morning. Uh, we've been speaking to Professor Benjamin Horton, Director of the Earth Observatory of Singapore at the Nanyang Technological University.